Hello, here's Andreas Kisser, guitarist from Sepultura, and you are on Whiskey and Soda. Enjoy. I want to talk about uh, the most recent Sepultura record that came out now over a year ago, Alex. Concept album uh, about uh, Bergie's novel, A Clockwork Orange. Uh, it was your second kind of concept album you did in a row with uh, Dante 21 based on the Divine Comedy and then that. Um, so first question is on that album. It came out quite a while ago now. You played uh, many of the songs live. Now in hindsight with some reflection on it. Uh, did you really achieve on that album what you set out to do when you started working on that? Well, I think so, you know, we're still here. <laughs> we never really, uh, I mean, we never m make like really big plans, you know, we really like to to enjoy what we do daily and uh, this album came about like that, a lot of jamming. It's the first album with Gian Dolabella on drums. You know, so we, we, we passed to another uh, period of uh, transition, you know, between drummers, between two albums like Dante 21st, 21, who, who was, uh, which was based on the Divine Comedy, you know, was the first time we, we used that concept, you know, like to, to pick up a, a movie or a book to do like our, our own soundtrack, you know, and it worked out great. That's why we, we kept um, the idea to do uh, Alex, you know, now with a totally different book and stuff. And um, yes, I guess we achieved, you know, a, a really good album. Uh, the the reviews and the reaction from everybody has been very positive. The songs fit very well with the old stuff. You know, we've been playing uh, like for the whole year now. You know, since the album came out, we've been so many different places, and uh, and the songs uh, a lot of people know them. You know, they sing together, sing along, and stuff. So. I guess we're very happy with the with the result, you know, and uh, it's gonna keep us going for the the rest of the year. You know, we still have a lot of shows in Europe. We have some dates in Brazil. Uh, we're still going to Australia and New Zealand, um, and you know, and already thinking about some some new stuff. We're writing some stuff on the road, you know. So. Um, but let's see what happens. You know, we're still very much focused on on what we're doing now with Alex and enjoying a lot on the road. Uh, with Derek Green coming in, I thought like the first album you did with him against was uh, didn't sound really focused to me. Just speaking as a fan, but I would say starting with Warbeck and now over the last three albums, especially with Warbeck, Dante, and Alex. Uh, it, it sounds very much to me that you kind of found your own sound with the new lineup. Uh, you're not like searching anymore, but you're it's li uh, sounds like you're really comfortable with what you're doing, like bringing some hardcore elements, bringing some classical elements, kind of making this modern metal soundtrack style, which I think no other band does. Um, I don't know, but that's just the fan perspective. What's your perspective on that? <laughs> No, I guess uh, I guess that's it. I mean, Against was a very difficult album to make. Um, we were at the peak of our career with Roots, you know, uh, touring everywhere, playing arenas in Europe, and uh, but besides that, the 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 band inside was was very turbulent, you know. So Max left in uh, at the end of '96, and we took the whole uh, year of '97 uh, just like trying to rebuild everything, you know, because we not only lost the singer, but we lost all the structure, you know, the management, all the connections we had with record labels and, you know, booking agent and stuff like that. And to lose a singer like Max, you know, uh, or, or to lose any singer is very difficult, you know, to replace and to find somebody else. So we took our time. We stay as a trio for nine months 
and only then that uh, we started doing auditions, you know, for new singers. And Eric uh, came in at uh, the end of 97, beginning of 98, he, he came to Brazil uh, to, to practice with us and um, and we felt he was the guy who really could bring uh, future to the band, you know, not somebody that was there to copy Max or to try to sing the same or to try to look the same and stuff, you know. It was a different characteristic way of seeing things, a different background, you know, different music and stuff. So. Um, so it was very difficult to, to, to even finish against, you know, we were, we were in the middle of a tornado together with an earthquake, you know, <laughs> so it was very difficult to, to really, you know, we, we thought about uh, stopping our career, changing the name, you know, stuff like that, but we didn't make any decisions why our heads were really, you know, crazy around, you know, so we took our time and uh, we felt that we needed somebody else really to complete the team and Derek came in. Uh, most of the stuff over the against were, were already written, but you know, a lot of the lyrics and vocals and uh, some musical ideas Derek came in to complete, you know. And we record in a crazy manner in many different studios, you know. Uh, the mixing was hell, you know. It was very difficult really to, to put everything together. But we had great tours, you know. We toured with Slayer, we toured with Metallica, you know, we, we did great shows and, and it was great for us to to recreate that group vibe, you know, and to Derek also to, to grow, you know, inside the, the band, on stage, and et cetera. So it was a great experience, you know, it was very difficult, but we learned a lot throughout the process, you know. So um, I guess we are in a much better place now, uh, you know, organizing our own career, not, you know, giving too much to managers and stuff like that, and really learning, you know, with our experiences. And of course, you know, to find an uh, honest sound, it takes time, you know. It's the music's not like replacement of um, a tube in an amp or something, you know. And even when you change a tube, the sound changes, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, so, you know, we have to really to to adapt ourselves to this new lineup and and the same with Gian, you know, when he came to the band, you know, we took like almost a year and a half only touring, you know, really to to build this kind of communication. And um, so it takes time, and, you know, like as, like as I said, as, as you said, you know, I mean, we found uh, a much more easier way to write and, you know, to put all the, the problems uh, aside and to resolve you know, all the bureaucratic stuff with labels and managers and stuff like that and and use all that on the music, you know. So I guess it takes time and we're still here, so we feel we feel great. Okay. I would also say that uh, Derek's musical input, uh, I mean, he writes a lot of lyrics, he also writes a song, songs with you, uh, has been pretty big on those albums. Uh, he really brought something new to the band's sound uh, and you actually also let him do that uh, so is that correct well did you see his size i mean yeah. couldn't say no you know <laughs> no but of course i mean there's no other reason to put somebody else there and you know not use all his capa capabilities you know of doing stuff i mean and it's different and we have to learn to to deal with each other not only professionally, you know, but we, we live together on the road for most of the year. And, uh, you know, it's great. I mean, he adapts to the Sepultura life and we adapt to his uh, own life and same with Jan, you know. So uh, it's great, you know, to, to, to reinvent, you know. I think the Sepultura spirit is like that. I mean, every album is something new that we bring in, uh, regardless the the formation, you know, if you put like Schizophrenia to Roots, you know, which is the same formation, they're very uh, different albums. Of course, we were young people, you know, uh, now we are married, you know, kids and, uh, you know, we change, you know, and everything changes naturally to the music. So it's natural that uh, our music goes like that, you know. So, of course, when you, uh, somebody's there is to bring your own ideas and, you uh, um, you know, and, and really to, to develop something new, you know, because it would be too boring if me or Paul or whatever say, oh, just go to the practice room and do this, do that and stuff, you know, I mean, he, Sepultura was always uh, very alive, you know, on the way we write and we record everything, you know, 
even stupid ideas or you know stupid names and stuff that eventually lead us to something really cool you know so we kept that we keep everything you know so uh i think it's uh it's a way that uh, we work very easy and it's, it's very enjoyable you know it's not like a burden you know to go to practice and you know try to to reproduce whatever you know we always have very great motivation you know to do what we do and that's the best uh, I, I know it's probably pretty early, but you already said that you're uh, writing music on the road. Uh, so, you, again, you did two concept albums in a row. You seem to feel very comfortable with that kind of approach. But uh, can you say, like the next album, do you still think about doing yet again some sort of concept album, or are you more in a mindset of saying, now we did? They did this uh, twice in a row, and now we're going for something completely different. Um, I don't know. Uh, so far, we're just working on on riffs, you know, like musical ideas, uh, you know, some 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 names. But um, I don't think we're gonna do another book, you know. Although, you know, normally in the movie industry, you know, it's like trilogies are, you know, the format. <laughs> But I don't think we're gonna do that. Um, we have 25, 26 years of history, you know. So I think we're gonna use that to to inspire ourselves with our own history, you know, to to show what Sepultura is today, you know, why we're still here, you know, uh, good or bad, different opinions. Everyone have a Sepultura in their mind, you know. Every fan have a favorite album or a favorite song, and we have so many different fan fans, you know, from different tastes and ages and generations. So, I think this is uh, material enough, you know, that we could use and to write our lyrics and our music, you know, and be influenced by our our own history, you know, old albums, old themes, and you know, uh, fucked up managers and labels. You know, we have a lot of hate, you know, that we can <laughs> explore on that matter. So um, I think we're gonna go to to that path you know it, it, in a way it's going to be our own biography you know in a sense you know like so it's going to be our own book you know so we might be writing you know at the same time you know d during uh, the riffs and lyrics talk about ourselves you know so uh, more or less it's going to be that kind of vibe that we're going to use for the next album you're going to play with the scorpions again when they come to south america for their uh last tour i hope so <laughs> i had a blast you know playing with them um in brazil and mexico they put out a dvd which is great uh not even a dream you know never dreamt <laughs> playing like that but uh scorpions was really still is one of the greatest bands you know out there and i was very influential on my early career you know i learned how to play guitar with some riffs from scorpions and for me, it was a great honor, you know, to be a part of it. And hopefully I'll be in Brazil dur during, you know, when they're going to be there. And hopefully they have a guitar for me there. <laughs> okay, so thanks again for taking the time, Andreas. No and you. having a great show tonight.